So once again, I can say last but not least, this is our only third order linear ordinary differential equation inside this sheet. It's, it's third order, which sounds complicated, but I must tell you, this is for a special purpose. Um, it's for you uh, to see an example of a very important kind of um, differential equations which are found when describing technical systems. And one of the big advantages of the behavior of te technical systems is as complicated as they can be, they very often, or even in most of the cases, um, lead to differential equations which have constant coefficients. So it is striking, isn't it? Um, in, in comparison with the previous one, there are no terms of x at all on the left-hand side. There are just, this is just a linear combination of uh, our unknown function, y, its first derivative, its second derivative, and even its third derivative. You know this notation, um, the number in parentheses describes or denotes uh, uh, the corresponding derivative, number three in this case. So um, obviously the equation is uh, of order three, but also very ob obviously all these um, coefficients are simply constant numbers. And this allows us, just ignoring this inhomogeneity for, for a while, yeah? we, we've been familiar with that, so that we will be concerned with the homogeneous equation first. That's why I just replace this inhomogeneity of, of by a simple zero, okay? So this, but this is uh, meant to be a zero function, zero for all x. So then it, um, it turns out that such a kind of equation can always easily be solved uh, with a so-called exponential approach. Well, I should give this because here, here it says to take the usual exponential function approach, uh, but I don't even put it there. Well, the reason is because by approach we say, y should be equal to something like e power s times x. And to, in doing so, we all know that due to the, the very simple um, features of, of, of exponential functions, that the derivative of this term will just be by using the chain rule s times itself, right? So uh, the first prime would be, um, yeah, let's, just take the time, put it here. Uh, y prime in this case, of course, would be s times exponential, s times x, sorry. So, and y second prime would be, again, using the chain rule, even s squared times e power s, again, <laughs> s times x. Now, and so on. What do you see here? You see that uh, all that can happen is that inserting this approach into the equation, you will find that, for example, the second derivative is transformed to be the second potency of S. So it's sort of mm, transforming this differential equation to a simple polynomial equation in the end, because the factor of E power S times X is always the same. It can be moved to the right, and then it can be argued since this should be zero uh, by the theorem of zero product, this exponential term can never be zero, so we can just put it away or divide it out of the equation. So in short words, um, this is um, a very lucky case of transforming a differential equation into a simple polynomial equation. That's what happens. And in this case, you just do it by recipe, right? You say, okay, this is the third der derivative, I replace it by unknown s power three. This is the second derivative, replace it by s power two. First derivative, s power one, zeroth derivative, as you know, um, derivative number zero, function itself, uh, is sort of s power zero. So it's just a factor of one. In the end, you just put your coefficients there with your um, powers of s, okay? So I get s power three minus five times s power two plus eight times s minus four constant equals zero. This is a polynomial equation, okay, uh, third grade, but Mm, honestly, it's been constructed in a way so that you could even guess the solutions. Uh, let's just shorten this and say it is quite obvious that this can be put in a product form to be s minus one in parentheses times s minus two, but squared. And now this is important this time. The squared sign is important. Uh, you know what it means? 
it means that one is a single, or let's say a simple zero of this equation, while uh, s equals two is a double solution. It's a double zero. This is what you, you are familiar with um, from discussion of functions, etc., in school, right? So we have a single solution and a double solution. Now, this has a certain effect. It shows, um, it turns out by an extended derivation that in such cases we have to, and first of all, we, we have to find three different linearly independent solution terms because this is a third order uh, differential equation. That's by theory. But now looking here um, and using the approach of e power s times x, this would mean we just find e power one times x and e power two times x. These would just be two linearly independent fundamental solutions, but there must be a third one, okay? The equation is third order. And you could say the exit from this dilemma is to use, to enforce your found solutions. It's, it's called enforcement, I call it enforcement. Enforcement, sorry. And enforcing uh, the solution mm, is performed by just mm, adding or yeah, mm, yeah, using powers of x. So it turns out that in this case, x times e power 2x, by the way, to the product rule, is also a solution of this equation. Although this result, um, you could say, mm, is not included in the original uh, approach. That, that's a fact. Look here. So the reason the blue, I said just for um, uh, for highlighting, uh, this this um, fact that, that s equals two is not a single solution of this polynomial characteristic equation, but instead it's a double solution, leads to the fact that another solution term is found or just is constructed, and you can just trust it. Okay, you, you can trust this method if it were even a, um, well, if this were for example. This were a power of three, and we would have a, a, a threefold solution, s equals two, then there would even be another term which is which would then be c4 times x squared times e power 2x. So you just count up uh, the um, exponents of x of these additional factors of x. You would do so, but this would mean that this has to be a, a, a fourth order uh, differential equation at least. So this is not the case. I just wanted to explain you uh, what would happen in this case. So let's go on and let's uh, just state that the general solution of the homogeneous equation equals c1 times e power x plus c2 times e power 2x plus c3 times x times e power 2x. And by the Vronsky determinant, it is easily to be shown, take your time and do it yourself. Um, it's easily shown that these two terms are linearly independent. So they are even a complete set of uh, fundamental solutions of our uh, third order differential equation. Now uh, we try and fulfill the inhomogeneity separately. The inhomogeneous case, as always, I, now I introduce my disorder function again, which is e power 2x. And now we have, a, by purpose, I, I, I gave you an example where the disorder function is very strikingly, um, you could say, resonant with the solutions of the homogeneous equation. Look at this one. This is already a solution of the homogeneous equation. Do you see the problem? Uh, just imagine I would try and fulfill this disorder function by a similar disorder response as itself. So like a sort of an, an approach with an unknown coefficient, say, say b uh, times uh, e power 2x. Then I would find this, there's no chance for this to work because everything which has the structure of a constant times e power 2x is already a solution of the homogeneous equation. So it never can fulfill any, any kind of non-zero reaction. There's non-zero uh, disorder. So that's why by approach, the, and the approach is simpler than in the, in the other case, in the cases discussed before, uh, by approach, this, um, this has to be enforced um, in a similar way as the solutions for the homogeneous equation. The enforcement in this case would be take an additional uh, factor of x squared. You might understand why this could work. The reason is that not only e power 2x is the solution of the homogeneous equation, but even x times e power 2x. So when I um, just explained to you that this, this, this can never fulfill anything other than zero on the right-hand side, so this one can't either. 
So, and, and so the first chance I would have is with an enforcement of even x squared. And this will turn out to be a fulfillment of this disorder. So what we encounter here, technically, perhaps physically speaking, is um, the phenomenon which physicists call resonance, right? You remember um, harmonic oscillator? Um, even the, um, how do you say? That's one minute, well, forced, <laughs> a forced oscillation. You have a harmonic oscillator, which uh, has an additional external force put on it, which is often periodic. periodic. And in case you would um, disturb your harmonic oscillator with a frequency that's much the same as its own natural frequency, this would lead to the so-called resonance catastrophe. You've, you, perhaps you've heard of this. Uh, standing on a bridge and just going up and down uh, as long as uh, and waiting for the bridge to, <laughs> to break down. Uh, things like that have happened. Okay, so this is called resonance. And um, well, let's, let me just, just put it here because this is um, what we have. Um, yeah, a case of, well, case of, this is not really a mathematical uh, term, but more one from physics and technical approach, a technical domain resonance, but I think it's familiar to you. Um, and so since this is the case, and since S equals two is a twofold solution of the characteristic equation, uh, oh, sorry, I just forgot to replace it here or to reactivate it. Since this is the case, we have to use a strengthened uh, approach for our um, disorder response. Now, I explained to you strengthened by powers of x, and just let's look and see whether this works. This is the approach with an unknown uh, special coefficient b. Don't forget, this is a factor which is not freely chosen. After all, this has to be adjusted exactly so that it fulfills the one times e power two x disorder function. So that's something very different from from having. Um, freely choosable uh, solution parameters, right? That, that's often the case. Uh, also here, you see, these co you could say the coefficients of negative one and negative one half inside this polynomial are not freely chosen. They are exactly adjusted uh, so to, uh, to, to give you the correct disorder response uh, in contrast to these still freely choosable um, solution parameters. So that's, that's a very important aspect. Now, uh, this is just plenty of work. Uh, actually, <laughs> to be done, uh, let's do so uh, by taking the first derivative of our approach, the second derivative, and then you will also see why this additional factor of x square is so important. It's important for this whole for these whole terms not to cancel each other out before they can fulfill the disorder function. That, that's the that's the joke behind it, right? So, uh, well, use uh, take the b to the left, and then use your product rule. Derivative is two times x. Keep this, leave this alone, e power 2x plus x squared, leave it alone, times now mm, carefully derivative equals two times e power 2x due to the chain rule. Then, uh, well, the b factor is for all. Uh, that's why the parentheses are there. And then going on. Yeah? And, and also try and simplify it. Always put your exponential term uh, to the right so that, it, so that it doesn't appear um, twice or more than once. Um, look carefully and see that you have a factor of two here and here you can even pull this to the to the left and then inside it remains x squared plus x. Okay, resort it. So that's it and this can be um, well used again as a starting point for the product rule. So I construct my second and my third derivative. And now this is a moment where I say, uh, this is what you've learned in the first semester and you perfectly know how to do it. So that's why I will really uh, take my chance and shorten it so that you believe me that these will be the resulting terms for even your third derivative in the end. And then all this, what you get here, after simplifying as much as possible, must be filled into your original differential equation. Insert in the differential equation, do so. This is the third derivative even um, pointed well highlighted with colors, you, you may see where it comes from. This is the whole coefficient there, uh, but 
of course, there is also an e power 2x. I can't get rid of this. This is the second derivative filled into the ODE. This is the first derivative and the function approach itself. You remember x squared times unknown capital B times e power 2x. It's a close relative to our um, disorder function, but it's enforced with a factor of x squared. We still do not know which factor of b we will need. But now look carefully and find out that this simplifies very much. And this is again due to the famous catalyst effect. It's the fact that uh, taking the right approach, you can hope, well, you can very um, calmly rely on the cancellation of many of these terms. And the terms that, I don't know, my, my E symbol, it sometimes looks like whatever, um, should be a little clearer, so. Um, well, again, believe me, all, this, all the square terms here of x. So this is four times b, let's, let's just look. Where is it? Four times b times two times x squared. So altogether, eight b times x squared. Hmm. I'm just thinking, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, so, and here, but this is also negative five times two times two times, uh, times b times two times x squared. If you look carefully, this is all together, this is negative 20 capital B times x squared. And here is another contribution of plus 16 capital B times x squared. And again, negative four times x squared. Putting all these uh, factors together, look, eight minus, am I right? Eight minus 20, yeah, that gets me negative 12, is it? Yeah, and then plus 16, so I get positive four and then minus four, it gets zero. So I have no contribution of x squared. Also, I have no contribution of x uh, linear. Uh, and this is not by chance. The reason is that we take, took exactly the appropriate approach with the enforcement of x squared. And what remains is simply four times b times, let's look here, three. Okay, so this is 12 times b, capital B, constantly. Okay, times e power two x, of course. Mm -hmm. Then, um, what is it? Minus here, ten times one, so minus ten times the exponential. Then also nothing, nothing more. You see, there's nothing constant here, and, and neither here. And what you see is, it was very important to use the x squared approach. Uh, in order for something constant to remain, at least in the second and the third um, derivative. So otherwise, you, you can test it. If you had ignored this enforcement uh, procedure, you would have found that your, 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 your approach by taking derivatives and inserting would, well, it would leave something behind which is just a, does not allow you to fulfill the disorder function. It's just a fact. You can always check this. Uh, well, in the end, let me see, we get eight times capital, no, sorry, 12 times behind, 12 times capital B and then minus 10 times capital B. So this is positive two times capital B. That's all that remains. And of course, times the exponential e power to x. And this has to be equal to right-hand side, e one times e power to x. You see, what I'm doing is, again, it's a uh, comparison of coefficients but it's just one coefficient remaining, and it is the co coefficient for this exponential. So that 2b must be equal to one, so that this equation is fulfilled for all values of x. In the end, 2b equals one means capital B equals one half. And now you see this simple uh, and single equation allows us to fix and to adjust this uh, unknown capital B correctly so that the disorder response will be one half x squared times e power to x. And as always, we may, must uh, allow the, uh, the general solution of the homogeneous equation to be included uh, for still the same reason, because it does not do any harm to our ful fulfillment of the uh, disorder function. And as abruptly as it comes, this is the end. Uh, it's the end of this playlist. Uh, it's the end of the math two exercises, at least of the official ones. You know, we meet again for exam preparation and so on. But let me say thank you for now. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Thank you for um, staying tuned. 
and um, well, just wait and see what what comes next. <laughs> bye bye.